Rick? Hey, Judy, awesome. you don't have to have an extra copy. Oh. You, know? you bring extra copies? Oh. I have yours, and then I just, I always... We'll go ahead and call the Wilmer City Council work okay. session to order. Thank First you. item on the agenda is the Public Works Committee agenda items. We'll start with uh, Sean Christensen, our city... I guess we won't. Um, first thing we'll do is community development, uh, Thorpe and Ziegler annexations. I guess we won't do that either. Sean's here now. Sean's here now. Okay, Sean, we'll go ahead with uh, your projects for the Public Works Committee, the Flags of Honor Memorial proposal. <coughs> <coughs> Judy's a whole agenda up here or no? Uh, we have a whole package of something. <coughs> it should be down at the bottom. Probably is usually where you put it. It's been good. Oh dear. Sorry, Mayor, members of the council. In front of you is, I trust, <laughs> is a uh, proposal for a Flags of Honor upgrade at our existing Flags of Honor <coughs> park out by Wilmer Lake. <laughs> Veterans Central Council is proposing to renovate these this existing this existing park, including replacing the wood entrance sign with a granite sign, reducing the number of flags to 50, removing the existing monument, unless we want, unless it's chosen or decided to keep that, which in, in which case we'd move that up front, opposite the sidewalk, and create a plaza in, that in, with the granite features, including bronze service emblems depicting the, the different service services. Recommendation would be to obviously a move to the council, but approve the proposal and allow the Veterans Central Council to proceed with the fundraising campaign. And I believe there were somebody. Brian Gisselson is behind you. Yeah, to answer any additional questions if you have them. But that's what's in front of you tonight, uh, mayors, mayor and members of the council. Okay. Mr. Gisselson, did you want to make any comments? Okay. It's a long overdue project that we've been planning. For you want to go to the <coughs> mic, please? Yeah, it's something that we've been planning for years. We we had some money left over from when we had the Vietnam Wall Memorial here. So okay. we've got that in a CD, and, and it's all going to be fundraising. We're looking at, as you can see, I don't know if you have the picture, but you can see there's pavers around that we'll be selling the pavers for somewhere between $200 and $300 a paver. And then the benches are like fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. We're looking for all donations. It's going to be, as you know, the central council is a five hundred one c. So, you know, it's all be donations. We're not asking for anything from the city except permission to go ahead with it. Councilmember uh, Alvarado, followed by Councilmember Osmus. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Brian, how many flags are currently out, out there? How many there's, flags? There's, there's 100 out there presently. Okay. And we've never figured out why they put 100 out there. So we figured if we take 50 out, that'd be one for each state. And then the, to take the 50 out, and then where the, if you, the memorial would be right at, on the top of the hill looking over the lake where the big memorial is now, that would be the, the general area. So then we'd have the 50, the 50 flags would the memorial will take up to where the memorial is. Sure. And sure. then they're talking about where the big memorial is now. We're thinking that maybe not to overload it, that we would put that memorial <clears throat> coming in from the parking lot. You'd, you'd have the sign that says Veterans Memorial. Sure. And then on the other side, we'd have the old memorial. Um, now, is it going to be um, 
uh, lit up on, it looks like we've got some lights on the outside. Will the entrance have a light on that memorial to them? Probably. I would imagine that we would still have to, we'd keep the, the, the lights that are out there now for the flags. So we'd have the ground lights that come up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Appreciate it. Councilman Rasmus. Well, he answered part or talked about part of what I was going to um, uh, talk about is I was out at the community center today for the veterans coffee and they had the blueprints out there. And so people were looking at them and it looked beautiful. Pretty much what we, what we have in our, in our packet here. Um, and you mentioned about people being able to buy the pavers and that they were going to reduce the number of flags down to 50. So there's that and significant for the 50 states, but then there's that many less that they have to take up, uh, put up and take down right. yeah. uh, for each one of yeah, them. And we plan on keeping the coffin flags for the 50. I mean, it's, you know, some people have suggested that we, we fly flags out there every day, but, you know, the coffin flags only last 60 days if you fly them every day. So, ah. okay. But I just, I thought it looked wonderful and uh, appreciate all the work. They said it's the, the, Disabled group and the VF and the Legion and everybody that's been involved with this is just, it looks beautiful. Thank you. Councilman Nelson followed by Meski. Um, thank you. I, it, it looks very good. I just wondered if you'd share a little bit more information about who the Veterans Central Council is. The Veterans Council that is a 501C organization yep. that a mixture of uh, the Legion, the VFW, and the DAV. Okay. It's how we get our money. We basically are. Our major project has always been we do the Memorial Day service or, the, you know, put the flags at, at all the cemeteries, and that's been our big one. And then we brought in the, the, the miniature wall, the Vietnam okay. wall. That was one of our other projects. And we've just decided that every every town in the area has a, a Veterans Memorial, and we just we decided that, you know, a town like Wilmer, we should have one. Well, looks very nice. Thank you. I just was wondering who made that up, who made up the organization. So thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I think this is a long overdue as well, and I think it's very well done. I wish we could put a picture on the television so people could see this. Um, <laughs> curious, what are your fundraising goals? What are we looking at? We're looking at we when we the guy that drew this up, we we were looking at two hundred twenty five thousand because mm -hmm. it's all granted, but he said that's probably going to be a little high. Okay, so but we've we've never had. I have to honestly say that the city of Wilmer has. Not to say, but the businesses in Wilmer are very generous when it comes to veterans projects. So we're not really, we, should, we don't see, we see any problem get raising the money. Great. So why don't you just go through them slowly? Just uh, <laughs> I think there's five pictures. I think I right. The council, this is one of the concepts um, labeled on top of the screen, obviously. But this would be the the plaza itself concept, artist rendering. This would be a concept that well, you can describe it, I guess. Okay, that's the main. That'll be the main uh, <clears throat> memorial, and it's it'll be a it'll be a one of a kind memorial because. The guy that, that designs memorials, he does them all over the country, and he designed this one, and the people that ordered it turned it, they couldn't raise the money for it, so this will be, this will be a one-of-a-kind one memorial out front. And like you said, this is, these will be the original, the flags there will be the 50 that are coming back up towards, up towards the road. And the pavers that we go around, and then the, the benches. Yeah, it's more of an aerial view of the from the south. Like, would be my guess. Is yeah. that you know, what your intent is here? And just a note on the benches. What one of the things they discussed this uh, morning was that um, businesses, uh, uh, depending on the donor amount, they'd set a limit of the names could go on the benches. Yep. That'd be another uh, contribution piece. <clears throat> And that would be from that view would be looking from the lake down back towards the yeah towards the highway. Yep. 
there another one? I can see the lights on the up front, but are there lights throughout the flags too? The fifty flags? The fifty flags, yeah, there's there's the lights are they run alongside both sides of the they're in the ground. I mean okay. they're ground level so they shine up. All right. Thank you. Yep. It's from the southeast, I think, or from the south. And that's from and that would be the new Entrance. That would be a granite the memorial. There's those flags of honor, Veterans Park. And if you can look off to the left here a little bit, you'll see the sidewalk going out to the memorial. And then he was thinking that we could put the the other memorial that's out there now, we could put that on the other side of the sidewalk so it wouldn't be. His big concern is we don't want to put too much out there, get it too crowded. Additional questions for Brian or Sean? Thank you both for your presentation. Thank you for your time. You're Council, right. what are your desires? You want to move it forward or do you want to leave it to the... Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. You want to take the next one around? Or? You want to take the next one? Sean, do you want to go ahead with the Y, uh, Wilmer Y Master Agreement? I know Mr. Uh, Rasmussen is here as well. Yeah, and I'll do <clears throat> most of uh, the information for that. I'll just present, I'll just uh, introduce Paul actually and let him kind of present this. What we're, the intent is that as, as most of you or all of you probably know, the, <clears throat> the um, contractor has been selected or a low bid is, has been selected and the contracts are ongoing now to try to get those agreements in place. And uh, Paul will talk about the multitude, I think, 87 some odd pages worth of agreements that uh, we're trying to work through with the different um, entities. And so Paul can kind of update you on that. But Paul Rasmussen is the uh, project manager with MnDOT for this project that uh, MnDOT is the lead on. And so with that, I'll kind of let, kind of let Paul take this from here. We just handed out a couple handouts. Uh, first, uh, just, uh, just so everybody remembers what we're talking about, this is the uh, this is the Wilmer Y. This the yellow indicates the new roadways, and the black line down the middle is the new rail track that connects the connects the two. Um, what I wanted to concentrate on today is the uh, sheet that looks like this, kind of a uh, walk through where we've been and and where we're at right now. Um, and where we're moving from from here. Um, the first one is a project initiation. Uh, this, this goes back to early in 2012. <coughs> BNSF came to uh, MnDOT, um, Kanduai County, and the city of Wilmer to ask for uh, our participation in a partnership to look at a western by rail bypass of, of Wilmer. Um, that at that point BNSF led the project and uh, led our approach to apply for uh, oh. yep. okay after at that point uh, the BNSF team led our uh, <coughs> led the partnership for our uh, application for a tiger grant um, in October of 2015, we received a $10 million Tiger Grant through the USDOT. Um, at that point, um, MnDOT took the lead in the project where we completed a value engineering um, assessment. And also at that time, we began negotiating the Tiger Grant Agreement with the 
Federal Rail Administration. Once the value engineering uh, was done, we commenced work on an environmental assessment, uh, which was completed in May of 2017. And about the same time, we started negotiating the master cooperation agreement between uh, the major part or partners, which would be um, BNSF Railroad, uh, the City of Wilmer, Candy, Ohio County, and uh, MnDOT. Um, once the environmental assessment was done, um, we started to work on the roadway design build procurement process. Okay, I should be watching a little bit better. Um, that uh, uh, finished with a letting in September, on September 26th. Um, so now we're down to the two green boxes. Uh, we have completed our negotiations of the master cooperation agreement. And one of the things I'll do here tonight is turn over the draft to uh, the city staff for review. Um, as we're, the negotiations are complete and we're essentially ready to just dot all the, make sure all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and all the exhibits are in the agreements. And uh, we'll be coming back later for a, uh, for the, the board to act or the council to act on those agreements. And uh, I've got, this is the packet of agreements that we've been negotiating over the last two and a half years. Um, so I'll just lay them out. It, this is the actual master cooperation agreement with all its exhibits. And this will be a uh, four party agreement between uh, MnDOT, BNSF, uh, the city of Wilmer and uh, Candy Eye County. Um, you can just give those to Sean. Yep. Uh, the next one is a permanent pipeline easement, which is the easement for the uh, sewer pipeline. The next agreement is the uh, the transfer and or purchase and sale agreement, which is for an agreement by which the city will provide land for the railroad uh, to build the new line on through the old uh, municipal airport. The next uh, agreement is between uh, MnDOT, Candy High County and the city of Wilmer. It's the cooperative construction agreement. Um, so this is between the public partners. And then the last one uh, is a turn back agreement for uh, reestablishing road jurisdictions after the construction is complete. So those are the, the five agreements that'll be going at, and uh, once we get those through uh, city review, we'll make any necessary changes and be back to the city uh, council for approval. Is there any questions? Councilman Alvarado. Um, what's, uh, what's the timeline or expectation from the city on that? Or? Uh, we're trying to be aggressive and we're hopeful that we could get these things turned around and have them in the council packet by next week so we can be back here on the 20th. This, uh, once we have these agreements signed, then we can award our contract and begin design on the, on the roadway. So. Councilman Mayor Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what's to become of the old Highway 12? Is still gonna be in place there for access? Portions of it will be. Portions yeah, be of it are being <laughs> removed. If you can see on the map here. The blacks removal. Yeah, the black areas will be removed, and then the uh, where it's yellow, they'll be remain in place. Okay, thank you. Additional questions for Mr. Christensen or Mr. Rasmussen? Thank you for the work that you guys have put in to this. I know our staff has worked tirelessly at this uh, along with the county staff and uh, staff from MnDOT and thank you MnDOT for taking the lead on this project. I know you guys have put hundreds if not thousands of hours into this project and uh, we are very appreciative of that. It's nice to see this getting close to uh, time when we're gonna start moving some dirt. So that's very nice. So, uh, and uh, if there's anything that you need, just uh, continue to work with Sean and Bruce as you move forward. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next, we'll have community development, Mr. Begley. 
Hmm. Councilman Fagerly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess I'll call on Bruce Peterson to explain what's happening with this annexation. The purpose I just read, do not move microphones, so I didn't. Um, the, the purpose of the discussion tonight, Mayor and Council, is to uh, simply bring you up to speed on where we're at with the annexation petitions received for the Ziegler Cat property and the Dennis and James Thorpe property. The Ziegler Cat site is the one south of Mills, and the Thorpe property is the one north of, uh, I think it's Word of Faith Church on on uh, North County Road 5. Both of the sites have been agricultural for some time. Um, we Bruce, could you pull those up on the screen? If you just uh, toggle down, you'll find uh, the map so that the public knows what we're talking about. Oh, you're on the right one. You just got to toggle down on the <coughs> other screen. <clears throat> Sorry that's about a, that. That's a picture of the uh, Ziegler cat site that's south of Mills, 74 acres. <clears throat> and the next one, the blue shaded, shaded area, is the portion of the Thorpe farm that's being petitioned for annexation. Um, we'd originally intended to do these by uh, simple annexation by ordinance after consultation with City Attorney Scott, um, he suggested that we do a joint resolution with the township. It's a very clean process. Uh, the next steps in this process will be to go to the town board meeting. There are no public hearings required in this process. If the city and the town board jointly stipulate that they want the annexation to occur, uh, that is the last step before we would submit it to the Office of Boundary Adjustments with the state of Minnesota. Um, Sarah and I will go to the town board next Monday and we will negotiate the portion of the agreement that deals with the tax repayment to the town board and it provides that the city should provide tax reimbursement to the township over a two to eight year period. Typically we've done five years, but we will sit down with the town board and reach some agreement so that they would continue to get a portion of their taxes, all or a portion of their taxes for a number of years. Uh, knowing that the amount of taxes the city will take off that property will far exceed what the township is currently taking off. So um, it's, it's really just a transitional payment set up in statute. So um, the next step in this process, and like I said, is to go to the town board and then we'll bring this back to the council on the 19th if the town board has approved the resolution at their meeting next week. So there's no action required at this time, but um, I would just like the council to uh, be aware that we intend to have it on the council agenda for final action on the 19th, should the township approve the resolution at their meeting next week. Can you just refresh us the Thorpe property, the nine acres, that's for housing? That's for housing, yep. And the Ziegler <clears throat> is for sales um, and service? Uh, it, it's going to be sales and service uh, for Ziegler Cat products, yes. It'll be a large dealership constructed there. They're going to do it on the eastern, about 22 acres, so there will be additional development that occurs on that site in the future. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Uh, is, this, is, the, uh, is the township in favor of this type of an arrangement? Uh, yes, we've... Uh, Sarah's had that conversation with the town board. Wilmer Town Board's always been a great township to work with, uh, never confrontational. They always agree that the city's in a better position to provide the services to these businesses and these uh, projects than they ever could be. So we've never had a contentious annexation with the township. And I certainly wouldn't expect one next week when we go meet with them. Any other questions? Thank you. All right. Public comment. Uh, next is the uh, 2019 Small Cities Development Program pre-application. Uh, Ms. Ms. Bengston and Ms. Swedeberg. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to kind of tag team this one here. Um, so, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, good evening. Jill Bankson of the Candy White County HRA and Sarah with the city. Um, we're here tonight to request your permission to submit a pre-application to the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development for a 2019 Small Cities Development 2019 Small Cities Development Program funding. We were just awarded funding in 2018. And part of the reason for coming back was a year ago, the HRA had intended to include in your 2018 request funding for the Lakeview High Rise. However, there was also in the works with um, the Southwest Minnesota Housing Partnership wanted to make a request. So we, dis we discussed and decided to back off requesting funding for Lakeview and we'd come back again this year. Since we're going through the process of applying again, um, Sarah and Bruce and I discussed, is there another activity we could request funds for? And since Sarah has a lot of things going on downtown, we decided let's request some funding for uh, some beautification dollars for streetscape. So I'll let Sarah talk about that first. Can that be? Sure thing. Um, Mayor, members of the council, um, part of this grant application is for $400,000 uh, for streetscape downtown beautification. Um, this money would be for, let me grab the map here, um, kind of traffic calming <coughs> curb bump outs. Um, it's not in the packet, but it is on the screen currently. Um, if I zoom in to an example, uh, we're looking at six intersections downtown um, along <coughs> Becker Avenue and Litchfield Avenue on 3rd, 4th, and 5th Streets. Um, at the corners, you'll see um, engineering has kind of proposed some different bump outs um, to help with traffic calming um, in our downtown area. Um, oh, in addition, some of that money would be for sidewalk and landscape improvements um, along those streets as well. Um, part of this grant requires matching funds, um, but we are using leverage from other projects that are already planned for downtown um, as our leverage money. So because of the lighting project that Municipal Utilities is planning, um, the Artists on Main Street grant that we were awarded through the Minnesota Main Street, um, as well as a project between the uh, Wilmer Arts Council and the uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield Healthy Together Wilmer uh, Bench Project downtown. We're able to request 400,000. Um, our current matching funds are actually 500,000. Um, and it was of Deed's suggestion that our request be less than our matching. Um, so we'll have close, if, if awarded that, we would have close to a million dollars <coughs> worth of downtown investment over the next couple of years. Sarah, before you step aside, could you talk, because uh, I don't think it's come to the council yet, just talk a little bit about what that matching would be. I don't think we've, have we had that yet? Talking about the new lights for downtown? No, we haven't. Um, Can we just touch on it just at a very high level? Yeah, Sean, has the, have we brought anything before for the lighting study <laughs> from municipal utilities? Mayor, members of the council, we, we haven't brought it forward yet. We're just um, just recently receiving it from the MUC. We've had some initial kickoff meetings for, you know, the lights are due for an upgrade within the next five years, I want to say. And so they've they've started the process of what do they look like when we replace them? Does the city want to upgrade to a decorative or whatever? So um, we'll, we'll gather the information and bring it back to the council for, for uh, you know, full discussion at, at such time. They have performed a lighting study um, that shows where we currently have lights um, and where the proposed new lights would be. There's about 20 less fixtures that we need um, downtown at their current approximation. Um, and that, that cost of that project total, their current estimate, um, not final, is about $460,000. Um, Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Could I ask her a question? Sorry. Yep, yep. Councilman, yep. Um, can you give me an example where I might see one of these bump outs? In a different city? Or in a different location in Wilmer? Or do we have anything like that, what you're describing? I don't think we have anything currently. Um, I do have a kind of a closer up example. Um, myself. So the white... Um, this white portion that you see, that would be the sidewalk 
Um, so it would, there'd be some decorative pavement kind of elements to it. Um, and it would, it would give pedestrians a little more, um, a little more buffer, um, if you will, between the sidewalk and on the corner there where that traffic would come. So, um, these portions here would actually be, would actually basically be sidewalk. Um, as we look at doing some different art projects and things downtown, um, you could see some art installations on those corners um, or, or various decorative <coughs> options, benches, trees, that sort of thing. Thank you. Yeah. Council Member, uh, you want this? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ha has there been any conversation with Public Works? I look at that and I think of snow plowing and the difficulties that might create. So I'm just wondering if they've if there's been any conversation there. Yep, absolutely. Um, they're the ones who put this map together, so they're they're in the conversation and well aware of of this uh, proposal. Um, there are, there are some other traffic calming options, like putting an, an island. Um, of landscaping in, in the middle of a street or something along those lines. Um, and that would be even more difficult um, on the snow plowing end of things. So this was probably the, the easiest route to go uh, for, for those means. Thank you. Hold on, Maskey. When we have these <clears throat> bump outs, do mm -hmm. they take away the parking that is currently existing where those are? Don't believe so, no. Nope, it wouldn't affect the, the last parking space um, because of the distance um, from the corner. The last parking space would not be affected. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, is it for basically looks or, I mean, it, to me it looks dangerous if somebody parks and then pulls ahead and somebody's standing there. Uh, um, what, what exactly is it for? Just Aesthetics? Partially aesthetics. Uh, partially it, it helps um, reduce some traffic concerns downtown. I know the police chief um, and Sean have had some uh, conversations about some different options for trying to kind of mitigate some of the traffic issues downtown. Um, it, it helps with pedestrians too, uh, making it feel a little bit more confident and comfortable to cross the street. Um, those sort of... Um, Different things that it, it actually create. puts them closer to the moving vehicle. So if you're standing right there at the bump out curb, the vehicles are that are moving are closer to you. Right. Um, I'm just looking at the other side of the story here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Absolutely. Um, if it's for aesthetics, you know, we 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 need to think about safety before that. <clears throat> yep. And uh, is the police department uh, all in on this too, or? I suppose uh, I didn't hear the is the police department, all, is the police department all in on this? I'll let you chime in. <laughs> Sorry about that. We were talking about one of the issues that would solve actually downtown. And uh, 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 City Engineer Christensen and I have had uh, several talks about that. Some problems that we have in the downtown right now are some of the traffic flow, people stopping in traffic, um, U-turns at the intersections because in Wilmer, in the downtown uh, um, business district, that's U-turns are prohibited by ordinance, and uh, we felt that that would be helpful there. Um, uh, Sean and I were just talking, too, that <clears throat> with these bump outs, as uh, right now, for someone to stand on the, the curb to cross a street, they're a little bit hidden from view by the last vehicle that's parked um, up in that area, and this could potentially give a little bit better visibility for somebody waiting to cross the street. So, and um, I think there is something similar on Main Street in New London the same type of bump outs if you've driven down that street. Oh. Yeah, and there's there's several other cities with this sort of solution to their downtown. Um, and they, with those solutions, it, you get some creative things happening on those corners as well to kind of play with different events that happen in, in the art downtown and, and different options like that as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Ms. Bings. <clears throat> the um, second activity then would be requesting uh, funding for the Lakeview high rise. Um, the building is almost 50 years old. We've done a recent uh, plumbing pipe replacement project in the building completed in 2017. 
Um, that was almost two and a half million dollars. We're going to do almost a million dollar project to get off the district heat system in the summer of 2019. Um, our next big project is windows over there. We have some, some uh, water infiltration issues going on there, especially on the north, northeast side. When there's heavy rains, we've had a few apartments. Um, uh, if you lay it down, then he can just, uh, just lay it flat, then he can okay. take the picture from the top. Let's see if any, um, you want to capture that, Cody? <laughs> so slide it up just a little bit. Okay. There you go. Oh, I don't know if you can see any of that. Here's just yeah, an example. Yeah, he'll, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll slide in on you. Okay. Um, so there's an example of some window damage above one of the windows in the units. Get tighter um, on that, Cody. <laughs> I guess we, sh we should just try and start to use this. <laughs> um, I'll flip this one over. This is kind of a bad one. Um, I don't want to give the public the impression that every single unit in the high rise looks like this. That's not the case. We've maybe had three or four <laughs> units where we've had we've noticed some bad damage around them, but it's just enough where we believe we need to. It's a concrete building. It has concrete panels that need to be reseamed. Um, there's cracking around some of the windows. I don't know if you can see that here. Didn't go the right way here. It's just an example there, um, but we just need to investigate more of the water infiltration issues. Worst case scenario, we think it would be a $2 million project if we had to replace all the windows in the building. 350000 would be requested from the Small Cities Development Program Fund. Um, we would request 350000 from the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency's publicly owned housing program, and the rest would come from the HRA. So that would be the second activity we'd use small cities funds for. Uh, Pre-applications are due November 15th. Again, if uh, D decides that they want to go on with you after they review all the applications, you'll be invited in December to, to submit the full application. That's due the end of February, and then announcements would be made at the end of June. Okay. Thank you. Can you, uh, can you remind us the uh, dollar amount we were awarded last year? <laughs> I should know this. Uh, you were awarded um, approximately $1.5 million. Thank you. Just under that, yeah. We talked about that, but I didn't tell you I was going to ask you that today, so sorry about that. Council, any questions? Do we have to move this forward tonight? Okay. Yeah, we need to move it forward if council's in agreement. Are we in agreement with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you both. I have uh, one last note. Okay. Um, I will just note that the bump outs and the tree plantings are actually in the downtown master plan. So that's partially where we got the, the idea and kind of the start on planning forward a little bit more with that. Correct. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Appreciate it. Next, we have an update on the 2019 health insurance update. <coughs> And reviewing the packet, it doesn't sound like it's good news. <clears throat> All right. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. I do have an update after our October 15th meeting and the direction given at that meeting. The unions did challenge the aggregate value of the alternate health insurance plan that the council chose to offer if they should reject PEEP. So we did hire an actuarial accountant to calculate the aggregate value so we would know for sure if it was in fact the same. And his report, which is in your packet as well, did come back showing that plan number five and I did have him evaluate plan number six as well. Um, neither of them were of the equal aggregate value to what we currently offer as our 2018 health insurance plan. And there is a statute also in your packets as well um, that does reference the fact that you have to maintain the same aggregate value with the unions year to year. I do have the full statute in there as well and I did have multiple discussions with our labor attorney. So I did retain a new bid for the 2018 HSA plan we currently offer that is through Blue Cross Blue Shield instead of through the co-op. So that did reduce the premium. And now that does make plan number four. I have the new plans that are the same aggregate value in your packet as well. Mm -hmm. um, it does now make that the cheapest cost alternative if the union should reject PEEP for 2019. 
Since this form was submitted, more unions have voted. So as of today, the supervisor unit has voted to accept PEEP for 2019, and they have signed the MOU. So the supervisor unit will go to PEEP, as well as, I'm assuming, the unrepresented employees. Um, 16 employees would all go to PEEP. And then the both AFSCME units have voted as well, and they voted to not accept PEEP for 2019. The LALS unit will vote tomorrow. So the recommendation is that we select plan number four from the new alternatives of the same aggregate value, and that would be the alternative to PEEP for 2019. Councilor Paulin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the information. Um, do you recall what the cost was uh, for, what was it, plan number five that was rejected? I think I have it in here. Plan number five, if everyone stayed at their same enrollment, it was two million twenty-five thousand nine hundred seventeen. All right, thank you. Council Member Meski. Uh, we've had we had conversations about the different nuances of the plans. Um, as you look at the plans, of course, we're talking in a $300,000 difference. Um, what is in the aggregate value that accounts for that $300,000 difference? So aggregate value, I am in no way qualified to calculate, but I was told that they do take into account the plan's deductible, the plan's out-of-pocket maximum, the plan's network and who's in and out of network, and as well as what services are covered at which percent and which are not covered, and the co-insurance amount that applies as well. So all of those factors go into calculating the overall aggregate value of a plan. So in my opinion, which is not professional, um, the plan number five, the out-of-pocket maximum, is double the current plan that we offer in 2018. So I would imagine that that had a big impact on the score. So um, the, the old plan, the employee had to contribute to that. Correct. And under the new plan, the city doesn't have to contribute. The employee doesn't have to contribute. So this is. Uh, um, so w was that information shared with the? Yes. That did the evaluation? Yes. Yep. He had all that same information. It's something I also discussed with our labor attorney, um, and it's it's basically the amount of the premium that the employer pays has very little impact on actually calculating the aggregate value. And he showed me several case studies and case laws that I can forward to you as well, but. That is the short version. Councilmember Nelson, followed by Schwantis, followed by Chris Christensen. So um, I believe Councilmember Meski made the statement. So the the difference between the two plans is just short of what was the figure? Between PEEP and plan number four, it's two hundred and eighty-three thousand dollars. Okay. And in addition to that, we've agreed to pay all of the premium. That is including the premium. That includes the yep, premium. total cost. So our additional cost that, that we have not budgeted for in next year will be? the budget. What we budgeted for is $2.2 million. <clears throat> so if everyone stays at the current enrollment, we're right at that. But however, some we don't know if everyone will stay at their same enrollment level. Okay, because we're picking up the payment for family coverage, correct? Yeah, or employees get married and, you know, status does change. But that's if everyone stays at their current enrollment. Councilman Christians, followed by Schwantes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess I'm always amazed at how these unions are really the employer of the employees. We aren't. Uh, I mean, they, they dictate to us what we have to do uh, and, and I just don't get it. Uh, and our charter says that we have to offer a plan, and I understand it has to be equal to um, what was in the past, but uh, it seems like we can never get along with you. And I'm serious. We just can never get along with them, and, and there's just more and more and more every year, and I'm tired of it. Um, I just had to express my opinion, and I think that's the opinion of many 
my constituents also. It's just, uh, it's getting old, getting real old. And, and that's, there's some value in these three-year contracts that we're doing. We don't have to uh, look at this every year, but uh, it's just getting really old, having to be under the pressure of these unions. Um, I don't mind giving people benefits, but they just ask for more and more. And I don't think it's the employees as much as it is the union reps that um, speak for them. Uh, at the same my piece, thank you. Councilman Schwantes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I would agree that we went to um, the labor negotiations really to show good intent on the part of the council, that we wanted to be an employer of choice. Yeah. And we really felt that we were extending an olive branch in, in what we were doing. <clears throat> I think that it would be good for the public to understand the PEEP um, program and what was declined because there have to be ramifications for that down the road. There is an expense to us for having to pay these additional, in, these additional insurance coverage and where is that going to come from other than total compensation for employees down the road. And I, I think it's really important then as we make those kind of decisions down the road that the public understands what the PEEP plan offered in which employees chose to decline. Could you share that, please? Um, well, I don't know the individual results of the vote um, on who declined it and who didn't, um, besides the fact that the units as a whole. So I do know Correct. the supervisors, yep, the supervisors did accept, and the both AFSCME General and Public Works Unit um, did reject PEEP, and then LELS has not voted yet. They'll vote tomorrow. But what is the employee's exposure with this insurance? With PEEP? Mm -hmm. Um it depends on where you go for your primary care facility. Um, if you chose a cost level two, it would be zero. If you had chose a cost level three, it'd be 1,000 individual, 2,000 family. And if you did choose a cost level four, I believe it's 2,000 for an individual, 4,000 for a family. And could you speak to the HSA, please? Yes. Yep. So the, the PEEP, there would have been an HSA contribution of 3000 or there will be for the supervisors, um, a contribution of 3000 for an individual and $6,000 for if you're enrolled in family coverage. And that can be used towards all health insurance costs. <clears throat> or saved. Or saved, correct. If it does carry over year to year. What about if they go with the plan four? With Plan 4, they would get 2700 in their HSAs for single, 5400 for family. Councilman Nelson. I have been concerned about the timeline that we've been put under with receiving these bids, and this is not directed at you specifically, okay? Mm -hmm. But we were at the 11th hour last year, and I've heard everything that that cost us two and a half to 150000 up to a half a million dollars for what we weren't able to do with health insurance last year. And I agree with Councilmember Schwantes. The direction was given to be the employer of choice and to find a way to do this. And here we are again at the 11th hour. And I am requesting a timeline for when we receive these bids and kind of the process that we've walked through. We got bids one day, and two days later, we were told the bid wasn't any good. Then we picked something that was not obviously vetted that we were able to do. And now here we are again at the 11th hour. And so I, I don't know how we do this next year. And um, we asked this question when we negotiated a three-year contract. How could we negotiate a three-year contract when we did not know what the estimates were going to be? And we were told that that was taken care of and obviously it has not been. And so I think we are owed an explanation for how we got to this 11th hour again for the timeline with the bids and how the bid was not able to be honored and some of the information that we received and so that's my request I don't think we have any options tonight um, if it's my understanding um, the decisions have been made for us through what we've been led down the road with so I don't think we have any choice but I do think we are owed an explanation with how we got here Councilman Meski, did you have a comment? Well, my frustration with this is, is actually at a boiling point. Um, Council Member uh, Schwantes' comments are very well received because that was the intent of these plans moving forward were to show good faith, to be the employee, employer of choice. This 
And the out-of-pocket, I think it boils down to basically where do you want to have your doctoring done at a level two or a level three. This allows that option to remain, but it, that comes at an expense over the two years remaining of this contract of almost $600,000. That has to be taken into consideration as we move forward with total compensation in the future, which is not where we wanted to be. We were trying to move towards a different piece. And I would argue also, when we entered into this, <clears throat> PEEP was the preferred plan that we wished to see. That was not memorialized, obviously, into the contracts because, of course, the union vote comes. And maybe some of that is lost as we transitioned from city administrators and we had the creation of an HR director and then we had a transition of an HR director. Whatever it is, um, the good faith feels like it is gone, unfortunately, because that's not where we were supposed to be. And it is very frustrating because I'm a very big proponent and, and uh, advocate of the union labor, um, being a union member myself. But at some point, this has gone to a next level and it is upsetting for me. And I agree with what Council Member Nelson says. It looks like we have to do it because it required by law. Um, unfortunately, in two years, this will be coming back up and it will not be pleasant conversation, I would predict. You know, I sat at the table when we tried to put an agreement together that would make us the employer of choice. Um, and I cannot agree more with what my fellow council members have said is that we have been forced into a corner and uh, we will have to equalize this somehow. And the council will have to wrestle with those decisions. And, uh, you know, we took, I mean, when this gets out to the public that the city employees pay zero, nothing, absolutely nothing for their health insurance. I don't know if there's another employer in the, state, in, in, uh, the city of Wilmer that does that. Um, that won't bode well. And then to have it rejected on top of that at a tune of $600,000 cost to the citizens. I don't know. You know, I ran on wanting to be the employer of choice. When I ran for mayor, that's what I ran on. I know a number of people sitting at this table ran on the same thing. And to, uh, I think Councilmember Christensen hit a right on a home run with what he said is that, you know, we went to the table in good faith and only one side went to the table in good faith. So it's discouraging. We have to move this forward, folks. Next item is the static display of aircraft. Mr. Holland. This is not good timing. <laughs> you know, they say, pro they say projects are good as they stand alone, but timing it, is everything. It, this is terrible timing. It sounded so good a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> but, you know, as they say in show business, that's a tough act to follow. Um, and, um, and we can talk more about that, too. Uh, health insurance, I have some opinions on that as well. But um, tonight I want to talk about this... Um, the F-101 Voodoo uh, aircraft, and this was uh, brought to my attention by the U.S. Air Force Museum. They gave me a call, and they asked if the city of Wilmer would be interested in another aircraft, such as the uh, F-14 that we have out at the uh, airport that was placed out there 20 years ago. And so I said, sure, I'm interested. Uh, you know, what, what can you do? And so they got back with us. Uh, here last month, and they're offering us this F-101 uh, Voodoo. It was uh, decommissioned in 1976, and in your packets, there's a brief history of the aircraft. And so I talked with uh, 
Mr. Curry and other members of the uh, airport uh, commission, and they all agreed that they would like to have another aircraft. I talked with Eric and our FBO and our airport manager, and he agreed that another aircraft would uh, be another highlight to our airport. And I also talked about the location of that aircraft. Would it be better to put it at maybe the entrance uh, at the airport? Or I thought of maybe at Highway uh, 5 and Highway 40, right there at that corner. And then we could put a sign that says, you know, airport three miles, point the direction. But that would be a landmark for that corner and a, a focal point for the industrial park. And also, that corner just happens to be 12 acres that the city owns. Uh, now, it is earmarked, as uh, Bruce pointed out to me, there is a first right of refusal on that property, but we, I think it's still a doable project. And Mr. Curry and, and others and Eric uh, thought that that corner would be a good idea if we were to place the aircraft there. Now, also hitting up tonight, I... There is some cost, and this is the downside. So you get the, you get the aircraft for free, uh, but you have to get it here from North Little Rock, Arkansas. And uh, I've been down there. And anyway, um, about 20 years ago, we paid about $35,000 to get that uh, F-14. But this would run, I got an estimate from a nice lady, um, and it's $60,000 is what she would charge. And they would disassemble the aircraft, put it on a trailer, bring it up, and then reassemble it here in Wilmer. I uh, estimate that if we poured a pad and electric, that'd be another $20,000. If we put a sign and some uh, other miscellaneous landscaping cost, that's another 10,000. So you're looking at around $90,000 uh, that we would have to budget for this. And if we were to accept it, the reason that I'm bringing it tonight is they're requesting uh, uh, a formal approval to do the project from the council uh, this month, uh, by the end of the month. Um, if we don't accept it tonight, can I get another one? Probably, yeah, probably. We can do it again next year. It's, it's not an issue. So you're right, the timing is kind of bad. Right tonight, especially when we get hit with some unexpected budget items. And so I understand if the, the council is reluctant to uh, take the plane. Although I, I will say that name Voodoo is pretty cool. <laughs> so, you know. We agree with you. you. You might get some tourists, you know, to pull off just to see that aircraft. So that's kind of the, the nitty gritty of it. And, uh, you know, if... Uh, if you want to move it forward tonight for a vote, that would be great, or, or not, that, that would be a vote in itself. So I'll open it up for questions. Well, I think it's a great idea. Um, and it's good to put it out there for the public, so just in case someone wins the lottery or they have um, <laughs> some legacy money that they want to donate, it might be a good idea for the future. But Right. Um, no, after just coming off of 600000 in the next three years for health insurance yeah. that we don't <coughs> plan on, um, I don't see 90000 finding its way to the top. Right, right. As cool of an idea as it is. Right. You know, the last one we got was all raised with private funds. Yes. And Pat Curry had, had solicited a number of people, and they were able to raise that with private right. funds. I mean, if if the... If the administrator could find that, would the council be more in favor of that if we came with that type of a proposal? Because I know last time it was uh, most of it came from the people from, that use the airport on a regular basis. So EAA chapter. Right. Yeah, they, they contributed a large amount of it. Mm -hmm. So we're not throwing cold water on the whole project. We're just right. saying that. Right. With this bad news we were just given, it's right. difficult for us to raise this to the top. So. Right. So maybe we could move it forward with the maybe with a motion to approve, provided that private funds are raised to fund it. Would that be acceptable? I would I'm good with that. Councilmember Nelson. I guess I'd like to see the airport commission bring it forward to see where they're at and what their plans are out there. 
because they were the ones who put the time and energy into doing that. And I didn't hear that from asking our rep at the airport commission that that had actually happened yet. And so um, I guess I'd like to see that happen before we take a motion on it. E each member was contacted in reference to this just as an FYI. Mr. Palmer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Administrator. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't see that as a bad thing. I, I know that uh, that the idea had gotten around and that they had done some talking and whatnot. I think symbolically it's probably a good thing to have when we do have a commission um, right. in place. Symbolically it's probably good for them to uh, uh, espouse an idea if there's an idea going forward to come and, and kind of put their stamp of approval. Otherwise, what's the point of having a commission, uh, at least in my mind? Um, and yeah, I, I agree with the others. I think it's a cool idea, um, but yeah, ninety thousand bucks is ninety thousand bucks. And when we're when we're looking at other large numbers, and uh, and still knowing too that we're probably going to be seeing some requests or wanting to do something with regards to signage out at the industrial park, and um, you know, where's that money going to come from? We know that that's going to be just right around the bend uh, with future development and expansion. So I don't think it's a bad idea. I just think uh, timing's everything. Uh, so hopefully in the future, um, you know, it can stay alive, but I don't well, see it as a, as an idea f to pursue right now aggressively. I, I wasn't trying to circumvent them just so you know, I wasn't trying to do that. In fact, I included them through the process, but they didn't have a meeting. And so I was trying to get it before the council this month. But if the, if the council desires, I will put it back to them and see if they can get it done and bring it back on the 19th. That's fine with me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I made the comment that about every month or almost every meeting, we're, we're getting requests to spend taxpayer money. Bicycles, airplanes, um, HRA. Um, somewhere along the line, we have to say no. It's a hard thing to do, but uh, I would say postpone until next year. Um, we got an election coming up. You know, now the economy is going to go the next 12 months, um, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, I would say postpone it for a year. And, and uh, there's thousands of these planes out there, believe me. Right. <laughs> there's lots of them. Sure. Um, and it, it's a great idea. Don't get me wrong, just like the bicycle was. But sometimes we got to say, I don't think we should do this. Uh, it's, it's, we're, we're spending taxpayer money every other week here. And it's, uh, uh, we have to be careful as a council. Think about the people that are. Uh, voted us in the office. Councilman Rossmus. Okay. But what would it hurt if we we put in there that it if they raise the money from private donation, it's not taxpayer money. Right. And right. then we haven't delayed it for a year. Right. I mean that's why I'm saying if we can make the motion tonight, you know, uh, that it's raised with private funds and then uh, otherwise, it doesn't come. And, and I understand the issue with the airport commission, but if you talked with each one individually, they mm -hmm. had their input. Right. And they had their say, and they were all in favor? Yes. Okay. So what know. would be the benefit of us saying no? It's not costing us anything. The, the airport commission's in favor of it. Um, it's just an idea right. that we wouldn't put a, a, a roadblock in front of. Right. Councilman Nelson. I just think out of respect for the um, airport commission, who's going to raise the money? Who's going to be responsible for the project? And so I think that there's just a, a need for it to come from them. If that's something they want to do and bring it back to us, that's fine. But um, I, I guess I'd like to hear that coming from them and what their plans are. Councilman Ramaski. Well, I think it gets to the same thing. Um, City Minister Holland, I would say you can go and pursue this idea and if you don't get buy-in from the organization if you don't get right. your private funds then i don't think we're going to hear about a plane right <laughs> right so i mean I, <laughs> it's a matter of you know what the stipulations of the council are right we'd like to have buy-in and we want to see private funds and then why would we not approve it so okay i have no problems with you moving forward in that capacity i mean it seems clear that that's the consensus around this table is that there are two caveats to the idea. Now go do the voodoo you do. 
Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> that was good. Point. That was good. You played that. Yeah. Okay. Next council retreat proposal, Mr. Holland. Um, tonight, um, it, I have a proposal in front of you that uh, requires a motion to approve. This is um, something the mayor and I talked about uh, having a retreat, and we're looking at uh, January to having this retreat with the council and with staff to uh, go over our goals and our priorities for 2019. And this is Mr. Bruce Miles. Uh, the city has used him before. He's out of St. Cloud. Included in your packets was uh, basically his proposal and his uh, cost estimate of $5,820. So requesting uh, that tonight we approve this uh, service. And so what we would do is because, as Councilmember Christensen stated earlier, there's an election tomorrow, which we all know, and so this would be in front of you for the next meeting. Uh, so this is for information at this meeting. We'd propose it to the next meeting for approval. And that way, uh, any of the council members that, um, you know, if there's a different direction that people wish to go, that can be expressed between now and then. So it's a, an idea at this point. Co council Member Alvarado. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do you recall the name of the gentleman that did our retreat when we were in Spicer? That was Ethical Leaders in Action. As I recall, it was Chad, uh, somebody helped with the last name, Win Win Winterham? No, that's not right. And then Marty Shear was the other guy that was with him. There was two people in, in the one we did in Spicer. <clears throat> when we did the one at Bremer Bank, it was just Chad, but it was still Ethical Leaders in Action. Or were they approached or? No. 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 Well, I thought the short did. answer is no. <laughs> okay, I thought they did a fine job. That's why I um, no, we didn't we didn't bid this out or anything like that. Okay. Thank you. Additional discussion. Okay, um, I'm hearing that. Let's bring it back to put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. If that's not true, let me know. Okay. Um, Mr. Holland, we do have a fair amount of time. No, it's, um, Does anybody want to continue their voodoo? <laughs> um, Do you want to talk at all about the committee structure, seeing it's <clears throat> 10 minutes after? So we have a just a bit over an hour? No. Or do we no, wait until the not. retreat? Let's wait. Prior. Well, it's Prior. on the 19th work session already to be talking about the committee structure. Well, we've been having it on the agendas. It's just that we haven't either had time or we haven't had a full council. Um, you know, so it's up to the council what they wish to do, or you wait until you have the retreat and talk about it there. Um, we have three meetings until the retreat. I think the retreat's a good time because it's moderated and it's you can get some outside perspective from people that deal with a lot of different bodies of people. Bruce does. It's true. Yeah, I mean he's experienced a lot of different dynamics, but it'd be nice to have that outside perspective. I think he can deliver the message well. Councilman Christensen, we know where you stand. On the other hand, we know what works and what doesn't work. There's a few of us on this council that know what's work, what works, and what we're doing doesn't work, folks. I think a few people would agree with that. Something's got to change. There's... I'll be basking in the sun when you guys are deciding that. So. Okay, there's not consensus, so we'll send adjourn to the regular meeting at 7 o'clock. <clears throat>